Some people bring their kids to Chuck E. Cheese for their birthdays. We have clam bakes on the beach for our kids for their birthdays. Squamish Tribe is located on the Port Madison Indian Reservation in Kitsap County, which is just northwest of Seattle. Seafood is central to the tribe's culture. Clams have always been an important food source. That's how the tribe survived. It's who we are, it's who the tribe is. We are gonna go down and harvest some clams. Oh, it's beautiful tide for clam digging. This is one of our better beaches here too, and it's full of clams on this beach. We usually save it for our elders because it's one of the best beaches where the clams continue to come back plentiful. So you'll see a lot of clams today on this beach. Junebug, you got that bucket, little lady? We have a lot of harvesters, and Suquamish has always been that way. Everybody dug clams. Today, you see it coming through the generations. So these are our clam forks. This is what we use to harvest the clams. You just dig them down into the ground and roll the dirt over, and that's what you start to see your clams with. These are clam holes right here. You look for holes in the ground like that, and then you know that there's good clams underneath those holes. So we got a couple different species of clams on the beach. These are steamers, they're little necks and these are manilas, and how you tell the difference. See the little curve on the manila right here, and it's got a wider, longer shell, and the, the lines are a lot closer together. On necks, the lines go up, and they're more oblong like this. We, we are targeting manilas. Manilas, they stay live a lot better for marketing purposes. I've been doing it my whole life, I've been digging since I was pretty young, since I could dig. Like I said, we did a lot of uh, clam bakes as kids, not with any parent supervision either. <laughs> we did a lot of that on our own, so we, we knew when, as kids, you know, if we were hungry, we'd come down here and dig clams. Dig to eat. I was named after a clamshell. My mom was a really good digger, like she taught me a lot about it. And so she picked up a clamshell off the beach and I got my name, Shalene. So on a normal harvest, we'll have about 30 to 50 diggers. We'd have a set amount of pounds that we come here to dig. And it's based on the tide, and they give us a start time and an end time. They'll take the quota and they'll split it up to however many diggers show up on the beach. We like to bring our kids on the beach with us so that they, they see what we're doing so they can grow up doing what we do. It's really important to teach our kids along the way of how it's done so that when they turn 15 years old, they're able to get their own pounds on the beach. One. Yep. I have my son Grayson. He is nine years old. He's been digging clams since pretty much all of his life. Just teaching him the clam identification. I started commercially harvesting when I was 16, when I got my card. All of my kids love the water. As you can tell, he's digging with his hands, having a blast. Nice. We manage a lot of beaches around here, so we know uh, how to plan harvest and how much quota there is from year to year on these beaches, making sure that we don't over harvest the resource. So we monitor uh, the resource coming back. We definitely also monitor water quality. We work with the State Department of Health and Kitsap District Health. Every two weeks, we'll get some samples to make sure that areas are safe to harvest. 50 pounds. Shellene, 20 pounds. Oh, I have June bug here. No, June? Yep, perfect. Good job, kiddo. David, 28 pounds. After it's weighed by fisheries, they have a slip saying what the poundage is. Everybody has to have a license. They get paid right there. It's a, it's a very important income source for you know tribal members. I like to take clams to my grandma. She loves them. I just, clams are a sharing product. So we are going to be distributing them to our elders and the community so they will have fresh clams. We wouldn't be doing it without them. They pass their knowledge down to us. And so we like to honor them and give back for what they've taught us. We'll purchase clam seed or clam spat that are very little, and we will seed beaches as the tide 
comes back in. These are very small clams. They're babies and they actually have never seen a beach before. These are produced in hatchery. So what we're looking for is that they are at least eight millimeters. There's genetics and feed all play into the color and the patterns. We're just basically following the tide and just seeding the whole beach all the way up. It will take about two and a half to three years before we can harvest these particular babies. I just love planting them because I know I'm going to come dig them someday. <laughs> These clams will go back to the Suquamish Seafood Seafood Plant. They will be part of the clam bag. So we got the sacks right here with the clams that we just harvested off the beach. So we take out all the rocks that you find and any little necks. Those are the ones that we take out. We don't want those ones in our finished product. Anything seafood's better raw. Tastes like the beach to me. Nice and salty. I'm listening for hollow shells. Sounds a little lighter. Like if I do this, it sounds heavy. And so if I drop this, you can hear it. If I drop this, it's kind of solid. A broken manila, he's no good. So when I'm looking for uh, dead clams, I'll take them, hold them in my finger, and push. See, I push it, and it'll crack up open. With a good clam, you do that, it's still good. It won't come loose. When you have a clam bake, um, and you cook all the clams, all of them are open, and a clam doesn't open, it's not a good clam. That means it's kind of has pollution in it. We'll go through, we'll pull out the broken dead ones, the rocks, separate the, the little necks that are still alive. I bet my youngest daughter will eat all of this by herself. Suquamish so Seafoods, we, we were established in 1996 by the tribe. We are a separate business entity of the tribe. We're the only tribe that runs the gooey duck fishery as a tribal fishery. We weigh them into 25 pound bags. So we'll put them over here in the tote. And this is our finished product. There's no broken clams. It's all beautiful manilas. Okay, that's our final bags. We don't like to send sandy clams out to no customers. So we let them purge a couple days and then they'll be nice and ready to go. So this is our recirculating tank. It continually recirculates the water coming from the bay. It comes right up into here and it chills it before it keeps it in here. So it's a controlled temperature and we put them in here and they're gonna be sucking up this water and spitting out their sand. The temperature control is real important too. If you put it into warmer water, then they think that it's time to spawn. So in the nice cold water, it, it tricks them into thinking that it's still cold and they don't wanna spawn. The shelf life for a clam, once we put them in here, we can, we can keep them in the water for about two weeks and able to ship them off to customers and, and stay good. Some of them go in the truck and immediately to customers. Some go up to the retail store. We have different buyers and keep them full of happy clams. Clams are very significant because they're always available, right? We would do clam bakes, pretty much of a regular occurrence, you know, whatever people may be celebrating at the time. That just kind of like brings everybody together. And that's, you know, that's the whole point of it. It's who we are, it's who the tribe is. And it's very important to maintain that, keep that going. I haven't met many people who don't like clams. And once they taste the way we do ours, and they fall in love because it's it's fresh steam right off the rocks, fresh as you can get. So you, you can see within the coal, you see these rocks. These are the rocks that we gather. They're a volcanic rock. They hold heat really well. Um, you can't use the regular beach rock because they will crack. Um, they'll split and they'll pop out and hit people and burn them. I have an eye for them. You, once you start looking for them, and you'll see it. It's shiny. You can see the lines in it, kind of gray. And these ones are beach rocks. They have holes in them, they'll pop, they'll burn you. And so this is, these are the ones you want. I'd like to run at least an hour, hour and a half. You just want to make sure your rocks are hot. They got to stay hot for 20 minutes under steam. So what I'll do is 
I'm gonna rake all this wood off. I don't think I got any arm hairs left. That's why I'm doing this. <laughs> Put water on my arms because it's gonna be hot when I sleep. This is our brush. So now what I'm gonna do, take these, spray them with some water so they don't burn. This is cedar boughs. You'll see there's the straight rocks. What I'll do now is I'll take my oysters and lay them on the bottom because they take a little bit longer to cook. And then I'll put the clams on. We have canvas. This is painter's drop cloth, but it's canvas. We'll, we'll lay this over them and this controls the heat. See how I open it, wafting out steam? I wanna close it up. See, see how we're steaming pretty good? That means the rocks are really hot. I've been doing it myself for about 10 years and I was taught by a few mentors in the tribe. I have memories of going down to the fish pit and watching all the guys cook. I was kind of brought into their arms. They welcomed me and I haven't stopped since. We do all the events for the Suquamish community, weddings, graduations, funerals, canoe journeys. We cook fish for the powwows. I like to feed the community. I like to feed people their Indian. I'm honored to be here today doing it. My kids, if they had to survive, I know that they know how to build a fire. I know they know how to dig a clam and I know that they could eat. It's so important to teach them what was taught to us so we can carry on our traditions and keep them alive. Our traditions would die. It's our job. My grandmother always said, long as the tide goes out, you'll never starve. When the tide's out, the table's set. Oh, they're cooking off. Yeah? Yeah. Looking good? Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, oh beautiful. Telltale sign of when they're done, you push and it bounces because all the clams are open. All right, so they're ready now. We're gonna take the canvas off. Look at that. Beautiful. And there's our beautiful delicacy. All done, you can see they're all open. Now it's time to enjoy. And when we remove the canvas, everybody gathers. Uh, like seagulls around the pit. We love seeing the young ones around. I mean, you, you see the different generations around the pit right now. It's kind of just, it's our way of life and it's always been a thing with the tribe, but like he says, yeah, since before. We're known as the uh, people of the water. Yeah. You respect the water because the water provides you everything. The water provides you the clams, your oysters, your fish, your crab. It's a big part of what we do. It's a tradition that's uh, been dated back to over 2,000 years within the Suquamish peoples. A clam bake is a celebration every time. You shouldn't be sad around a clam bake. It should be all smiles. Unless you get there late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the activity of clam baking, fishing, ceremonies, that's just who we are and what tribal people do. It's an important thing that keeps your culture alive. That's why I'm so proud of our fishermen that keep fishing, you know? You gotta remember, if you don't have a culture, you don't have a tribe. 